I would like to turn to mention one thing about disease monitoring. We spent a lot of time talking about checking um, B. variable levels via, via international uh, standardized testing on an every three month basis. But what happens when there's been a slight change in PCR results? How worked up should I get um, if I see a patient who has gone from, from 0.1 to 0 0.2? When, when would you bring that patient back? Maybe, Neil, I'll start with you. Um, yeah, so fluctuations in my experience happen quite frequently, and unfortunately they cause a fair amount of alarm to patients. Um, I, the, the worst, in my opinion, are those patients who fluctuate between being undetectable or maybe weakly positive to being quantifiable, because you don't really, you know, you don't really know how far below detectable they were, and so, uh, but but that's always you know a, a source of a, of great concern. Um, and Neil, is that because you're going to look for a true change as a log increase? Yes. And is that, so if they've gone from undetectable to detectable, you don't know if they've had a log increase. Right, right. And so you always have to take that sort of thing, you know, somewhat seriously. Um, um, but I think, you know, it's certainly reasonable. I've seen patients um, without any intervention then, you know, go back down to being undetectable. And um, in some cases it's been, you know, even before I've told them of the results. So I, I don't think it's an issue that they were non-adherent and then they, and then they are actually, you know, back on the wagon. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I think this, uh, I think a one log increase in a patient who's been adherent, um, although to be truthful, even if somebody tells me that they've not been adherent, if their level has jumped, I still feel obligated at that time to check for a resistance mutation um, because it's entirely possible that they could have, you know, they could have some component of resistance as well. Um, so yeah, th that's that's pretty much the, the context in which, um, uh, you know, I I, I, I find the, the the level of increase uh, to be to be especially concerning. If someone has had a log increase. You um, evaluate everything exclusively from the blood. Do you subject yes. folks to a bone marrow? Um, so some suggest that if you have a loss of a major molecular response, you may consider doing a bone marrow aspiration. I find myself doing very, very few of these, um, in part personal preference of my own and, and in larger part that, you know, preference of my patients. Um, um, I think we can get most, I mean, certainly every patient at diagnosis should have a bone marrow biopsy, but I think, I think it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's relatively uncommon. I will do it in younger people who don't have a convincing molecular, deep molecular remission, um, more for medical legal reasons. I feel like if I can document that they have a complete cytogenetic response, I can, you know, say I've dotted the I's and crossed the T's and I don't need to switch therapy. But, but for the most part, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not doing too many bone marrow aspirations. So what about the patient who, um, comes to see you for their three month mark and they have not had a log increase, but they've had an increase. Do you, what's your time interval to have them back to see you again? Maybe Doug. I continue to use the three month monitoring schema. Um, I, I, for a significant log or greater than a log jump, you know, I, patients get anxious. I'm a little anxious. I, I, if I'm maintaining them on the same drug, I may say come back in six or six weeks or eight weeks little shorter, but for the most part, a small change. Um, I still remain at three month intervals and continue to monitor for a, a stepwise progression mm -hmm. versus somebody who's just sort of bouncing around, hovering around some sort of disease stable point. That's pretty similar I with their practice. I echo what uh, Neil and Doug has mentioned. Yeah, I think that uh, the discontinuation studies have shown us a little bit more about when somebody loses response and they're not taking the medicine, they lose response pretty quickly there's a big jump. It's not usually subtle, mm -hmm. but in the patients who are developing resistance, that jump is actually a gradual jump, so you do have time. So if I see a big jump, I will actually send my nurse in to ask them about adherence, because they always tell me that, I've, that they're taking the medicine. But if I see a gradual movement up over months and months and months, I start thinking about resistance, and I make sure that we're getting the resistance te testing. But it's more, as you said, it's more anxiety-provoking for the patients. Often it's just that phone call saying, hey, you're wet, you went up, 
and then they say, oh, you know, Doc, I wasn't taking the pills last month. Okay, get back on the wagon, and then we'll, we'll do it again. Um, and once again, I don't make that phone call. My nurses make that phone call, because when I do that phone call, they, I, I'll call them and tell them that, that they, they're not doing as well. I'll hang up, and my nurse will then call to make the second call, scheduling the appointment and finding out if they really were taking the medicine.